Hello, I'm Dan with the Genealogy and Local History Department at the George Memorial Library in Richmond. Today I will be going over a few of the more advanced things you can do in the FamilySearch database. The database is free for anyone to use. You'll just need a username and password to access some of the records. This database is operated by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, more commonly known as the Mormon Church, once you have entered in your search criteria. You can either add more information by clicking on any of these other categories or click on search. After you enter in a search, over to the far right, of the results list, you'll see several icons. And these just give you a little bit more information about the record. This first one, and you can move your mouse on top of it, tells you that a family tree is attached to the record, and you can click on that, it'll take you there. You can also view the details of the record, and this is the indexed information here. Then there is a camera and it'll tell you, and you click on it and you can view the image. You can also get to the image by clicking on the name of the person and blow it up that way. And this one's a 1940 census. You can scroll down and see more images if available. And again, just move your mouse on top of it and it'll tell you what it is. So here for Cornelius Paul McFadden, I have 1,349 results. You can select how many results you want to see per page, whether it's 20, 50, or 100. You can scroll through the list and continue on to the next page. You can also filter your, filter your results by selecting birthplace, birth year, or birth range, marriage, and update any of these. Or you can click on the collections tab. When you go to collections, it'll show the databases where your person, or at least the name that you've entered, came up in the search. So for Pennsylvania, Philadelphia marriage indexes, there's 648. Find a grave has 41. The US census has several as well. And you can select the database you think would be most useful. He did live in Pennsylvania for a time, so I'll select that one. As far as I know, he never lived in uh, Ohio. So I'll leave that unchecked. Find a Grave is a good one to check. The Genealogy Bank Newspaper Obituaries. And then all the census records. And then any of the other databases that look good. There is one for naturalizations of World War I soldiers. So I will click that as well. Okay, then filter the results. And now you have six collections selected. And you can browse through the list. And you see now there's 740 results. Of course, a lot of the names are not quite going to match, but you can go through the list and see if any of them are the one you're looking for. If you decide some of the collections aren't providing useful information, you can get rid of them by unchecking. Then scroll down and update. So now I'm just searching three collections and I have a total of 722 results. Another way to search is by location. You can click on the part of the world you want to search. So I'll pick the US and then go to Arkansas.
and you can enter in your search criteria here or scroll down and look at the records. Click on show all 96 and you can see the various records that are available to search. Okay, if you find one you want to look at, so I want to look at county marriages. Now here you can enter in the name you're interested in. And browse through the list. And the camera indicates that there is an image of the file or document. and you can blow it up, look at it, you can print it, and you can download it or save it to your computer file. Also, the site will often have learning courses you can take. So this one is United States Research Gulf South Region, Arkansas, and it's a short video, three minutes. And you can see all the resources and I recommend going through these oftentimes they will have some helpful information and if you're not looking for a specific region you can search for a collection you can either enter in the title and if you don't know it you can browse all published collections and here it gives you an alphabetic list or you can narrow it down. So I'll put in again the United States. And then I want to pick the area. And again, I'll pick Arkansas. And this gives you 22 various collections that you can look through. And you can narrow it down further by date or by type. So I'll just look for births, marriage, and death records, and then narrow it down to 13. And again, it's the similar setup. You can enter in a name and other information, or you can browse through the images. And this one has only 27 records, so it's fairly easy just to go through and see if you might have anything. And Family Search has a lot of records on its site that have not been indexed yet. That means if you enter in the search criteria, the record will not pull up. So you can go to search and click on images and enter in the location you're looking for. So I will go to Pope County, Arkansas and then search image group. And here are the types of records that are available. So I'll click on probate record. and it pulls it up so you can browse through it okay, click on the first page and see what information is there this can be a little bit more labor intensive if there's not an index that indicates the page the person might be on but many times it's worthwhile just browsing through it. Um, you can sometimes find information on your ancestor or someone else re related to them, perhaps a neighbor where the other person is mentioned. So definitely worth checking out. Another way you can access these records 
is if you go by location. And scroll down and search image only historical records and you can browse through them. And again, Arkansas probate records. And then it's broken down alphabetically and just click on the section you're looking for. In some cases, the image is not going to be available online. And you will need to either visit one of the LDS branch libraries or one of the partner library sites, such as the Clayton Library, in order to see the records. In order to find a branch or partner library, you can go to search and click on the research wiki. And under centers and libraries, you can visit the Family History Library, and that is the main library in Salt Lake City, Utah. You can go to one of the Family History Centers and scroll down and click on Find a History Center and enter in your location. And then it pulls up the center closest to you. And sometimes it's a good idea to go ahead and browse through collections that are indexed. Here I am in Ohio records and I scroll down to the census and I'm going to click on 1880 because I have a, f a family that was living in Ohio, 1860 and 70, and then in the mid to late 1880s, they died. But I have not found them in the 1880 census. And it's possible that their names were pretty badly misspelled or the indexer wasn't able to make out the name correctly and any num number of reasons why you can't find that record. You can do the search for the names here in just search for Ohio 1880, and I've done that, but I haven't had any luck. And you can also browse the collection. So from here, you pick the states, and then you can pick the county. So they were living at last time I saw in Vinton County and then in Clinton Township. At least according to the 1860 and 70 census. It gives you the enumeration district. And there's only 27 pages, so it's not too difficult to go through and you can browse and carefully examine each of the names and maybe you will find the ancestor you're looking for. Another resource I found a lot of beginners don't take advantage of are the books that are available through FamilySearch. You can access it a couple of ways. You can click on books here or go to search and click on books here. You can scroll down and read with the partner libraries that also provide scanned images of books. And you can click on the link and read up about the institution. Or you can enter in the name that you're interested in. So I'll put in Cornelius Autry. Okay, the descendants of Cornelius Autry. So I'm going to click on the title. And in here you can view all 1,265 pages. You can get some information about the book.
and there are several different ways you can search. You can click on thumbnails and it will give you images of the pages. You can click on facing pages so it's a little bit larger. You can use the pages here and jump to the end of the book. And this one does fortunately provide an index. You can blow it up and go through the name list. Or you can click on the magnifying glass and search for a name. So I'm going to enter in a name, Dicey Wallace. And of course, Dicey is spelled different ways depending on the records. So I can, I could leave that out or try various different spellings. It can take a while to search because it is a large document. So I got 69 results, so that's not too bad. So. I'll go ahead and just browse through the list. And there are quite a few Wallaces. Okay, here's the one I'm looking for. So John Maybe Autry and Dionysi Dicey Wallace. So I'll click on that and it'll take me to the page. And here's the record. So again, you can blow it up and you can read a little bit about them. Children, she's where she is buried. A little bit about the people and their descendants. And this completes that family. So there's not a whole lot of information. And unfortunately, this one doesn't cite where the information was found. So once you have this, you can copy it, print it out, and then start researching them and see if you can find other information, such as when and where John may have died and where he is buried. Due to copyright, not all of the books on here are going to be available for are going to be available online. Here I did a quick search for Pope County, Arkansas. So I scrolled down and the first one here says full permission. This one is a public. This one says protected. So I'll click on it and it's marriages book L Pope County, Arkansas. So I'll click on view and it tells me that due to copyright restrictions, this book cannot be viewed online. So the best option for this one is try to access it through interlibrary loan from another institution if they have it. And to see if it is available at another institution, you can go to WorldCat, the WorldCat database, and just type in the title. Okay, and here's the list of it. And it does look like several other libraries have it. So if you're not near any of these, 
just go to your local library, fill out an interlibrary loan request, and and see if they will loan the book. In some cases, libraries won't loan books like this because they're rare or maybe old and not in the best shape. So you can request the pages or the name of someone you're searching for and possibly they will make a copy and send you that instead. And not all records are going to be available at FamilySearch. There are many partner sites which FamilySearch will link to. Some are paid sites like Ancestry, Fold3. Others are going to be free sites, um, various courthouses, um, other libraries. And the way to find those is to do your search. And then scroll down through the list. And when you see an image like this, it indicates that it is at a partner site. This one happens to be Find a Grave, and again, that is a free site. And this one here says it's of West Virginia births, so I'll click on the name. And the image says to view these images, go here to West Virginia Culture Site. And here's the image. And to view the data associated with this, you can click here and then it'll break it down. You'll see here we're at the West Virginia Department of Arts, Culture and History. And you can look through here and here's Elsie's information. October 30th, 1880 in Berkeley County. Gives you a breakdown of the information. And again, you click on the image. And there are also family trees online that you can search. You can enter in the name. and whatever information you have. Okay. Click on the person you think you're interested in looking at and you can view the person and break down their information. You can view your relationship to the person you can click watch, so if anything is updated, you'll get a message. Or you can view the person's tree. Okay, so here she is, Clara Madeline. And again, it breaks down the information. And this one has five sources. Unfortunately, not all of them are gonna have sources, or some of the sources are just gonna link to other people's trees. So you have to be careful with this. So here it looks like there's quite a bit of information, US Census, Ohio births. So these are, look reliable. And the one thing about the family search trees is that anybody can go in and update the record. Some people don't like that. Um, other times people can get into little online squabbling where they'll change records back and forth.
the names I add to my tree are usually brick wall people. Either people that I'm looking for more information on or haven't been able to verify through the historical record. Although a lot of times, many of the names I'm looking into are already added to the tree, but they're just kind of floating out there and not attached to anything. So I hope I can eventually verify and be able to merge those two records. And another thing I want to go over is the Family Search Wiki, which is very helpful. And I encourage everybody to, when they're getting started, especially with a new region or area, um, to take a look at it. So you can browse by country, or you can search in, type in what you're looking for. So I'll put in Pope County. Okay, so it came up with Pope County, Arkansas. So I'll click on the name and it gives you a description of the county, some general information, when records start, birth in 1914, marriage 1831. And of course it tells you that there's limited compliance until the 1920s. So if you do have something that early, you may not have much luck finding anything. Boundary changes cities, townships, a timeline. So it will save you a lot if you look on here and see what records are available before you start going to libraries and looking for the information. Sometimes you might be searching another database, such as in this case, Ancestry.com, or you may come across a notation for an FHL film number. This refers to the Fem Family History Library film number. And in this case on Ancestry, there's no image available. And I'm searching in the Ohio Births and Christening Index for Clara J. Schildauer. So with a number, I just go back to the Family History Library, scroll down and click on Film Number and enter that number. Then the record shows up. You can browse through the list and see if you can find the name. This one's kind of long, so I'm going to add the name I'm searching for. and three records pop up. So I'll click on the first one and it breaks down the information available. Frances K. Lyons is the daughter in this case and Clara the mother. Click on the record and then blow it up and go scroll through to find looking for the name. In some cases, the, rec the listing may not appear on the first page that pops up and it says so right here. So you may need to go a couple of pages back and forth in order to find the right name. Thank you for watching the video. I hope it gave you some new information and new ideas on how to use the Family Search database. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And if you would like me to cover a topic in the future, let me know as well. Goodbye.